fellas, come on in, take a seat. <coughs> Step by step guide to follow. Right. Number one, know the rules. Right. 
learn the safety rules and guidelines for your workplace. Um, every workplace is going to have them. Just get to know them, learn them, know what's going on. All right. <clears throat> Number two, spot the hazards. Look out for anything that could cause harm or slippery falls or dangerous machinery. Does anyone else have an example of a hazard? Anyone? Yeah, no. pretty pretty common in, uh, in classrooms. Nobody wants to put their hand up. How about you? You got, you got an example of a hazard? Check that cutting tools, jigs, and other required tools and equipment are available, safe, and functional. <coughs> Excuse me. Look over each tool for damage or wear that could cause accidents. Right. Try out each tool to ensure it works properly. Maintain and keep tools in good condition by sharpening blades and oily moving parts. Right. Sharp blades, moving parts, right. moving parts. <coughs> Confirm safety features like guards and emergency stops are working. This machine might have a guard here, just make sure it's there, make sure it's working. Uh, put tools away in their designated spots when not in use to prevent damage. Make sure everyone knows how to use the tools safely. Always provide and use appropriate gear or uh, safety gear or PPE. Everybody should buy now you should know what PPE is because it's probably been shoved in your ears 400 times. Right? The word PPE, personal protective equipment, is going to be everywhere. Set up machines, alright, that's your next one. Check the emergency stops, gauges, guards, control, and safety equipment are functional prior to machine startup. Do not start any machines without doing these simple things. <clears throat> Number one, check that the emergency stop buttons are accessible and working properly. 
They're not pretty self-explanatory. If they're not accessible to work properly, something goes wrong, we're doomed. We're all, many, many bad things can happen. Loose fingers, loose arms, whatever it may be. Right? Number two, ensure gauges such as pressure or temperature indi indicators are accurate and functioning. Number three, check that all guards such as blade, sorry guys, it's a little bit outside. Start again. Number three, check that all guards such as blade, blade guards or safety shields are in place to secure and clear all damage. Number four, try out machine controls to ensure they respond correctly and smoothly. Number five, regularly maintain and service all safety features to keep them in good working condition. Number six, uh, keep records of safety equipment, inspections, and maintenance. <clears throat> All right. Complete trial runs to check that the machine is fully functional and that finished work meets task, task accuracy and quality requirements. Right. Pretty simple thing to follow here. Number one, set up the machine and materials as normal for regular production. All right. I wish this laser pointer works, so I'll just go like that. For some reason, it doesn't work on the TV. A bit, bit of fun, actually. Number two, run trial runs using the machine following the plan settings and procedures. Number three, keep a close eye on the machine during trial runs, noting any issues or abnormalities. All right. If you've got the, if you're using a CNC round and you've got that set up to go, I don't know, eight mil into a sixteen mil board and it goes nine mil in, it's probably something wrong. All right. Examine the quality and accuracy of the finished pieces produced during trial runs. If any issues that come across, make adjustments to the machine settings or process. If further adjustments are made, run additional trial runs. Note any adjustments made and their effects on the performance and quality, right? If somebody else comes to use the machine, you've adjusted it, they need to know what's going on. Right? Ensure that the finished work meets the accuracy and quality requirements specified for the task. Right? And then once you're satisfied with the trial run outcomes, confirm that the machine is fully functional and capable of meeting the task accuracy and quality requirements. Good. <clears throat> All right, operate machines. Put your edge band to be in use there. Follow machine startup procedures in accordance with manufacturer instructions. Right. Begin by thoroughly reading the manufacturer's instruction manual for the specific machine you're working with. Make sure workspace, make sure the workspace is clear of any obstructions or hazards that could interfere with the machine operation. Right. <coughs> Check that all safety features are functioning correctly, including emergency stops guards and safety switches. Power up the machine according to the manufacturer's guidelines following any specific sequence or procedures that one. Verify, oh, I'm all the way back over here. Verify that all the settings are correctly configured for the intended operation, including speed, feed rate and tooling. All right. If possible, run any diagnostic tests recommended by the manufacturer to ensure all systems are functioning properly. Keep a close eye on the machine during startup <coughs> excuse me, uh, to ensure smooth operation and address any issues quickly. If something goes wrong, you don't want to just leave and go wrong. You also want to address it pretty quickly so it doesn't continue happening or keep happening. Conduct the test run with minimal material to verify that the machine is operating as expected. Once satisfied with the machine's performance, double check all the settings and safety features before proceeding with full production. Mm -hmm. right. Operate machine in accordance with its design, capacity and purpose to, and to manufacture recommendations. Right. A couple of simple things here. Familiar eyes. Familiarise really yourself with the machine's capabilities, limitations, and intended purpose as outlined by the manufacturer. You've got manual. Right. Refer to the manufacturer's manual or guidelines for operating instructions. 
recommend settings and safety precautions. So I know most of you have probably got the tool, you pick up the manual out of the box and you throw it out. But when you use a big operation, when you use big tools and stuff, you shouldn't do that because you need to know how to use it, you need to know what's going on so that we don't get hurt. Right? Clean, ensure the workspace is clean, organised and free of obstructions that could interfere with the machine operations. Right? Safety, big one. Need to be safe. Verify, <coughs> excuse me, verify that all safety features such as emergency stops and guards are in place and functioning properly before starting the machine. Power up. Power up the machine following the manufacturer's recommended procedure, including any specific startup, sequence, or safety checks. Right, load. Load materials into or onto the machine, ensuring correct alignment and secure fit. <clears throat> Watch. Keep a close eye on the machine while it's running to ensure smooth operation and address any issues swiftly. Operate. Operate the machine in accordance with established procedures and practices outlined by the manufacturer, including any recommended maintenance like regular oiling. Alright, and lastly, power down. When finished, power down the machine following the manufacturer's recommended shutdown procedure and perform any necessary maintenance or cleaning. Monitor machine operation to ensure product quality and output. To ensure product quality, it's crucial to understand the variables that affect it, such as machine settings and materials. <coughs> Regular checks on both the machine and products during production help, set, help maintain standards. <clears throat> Utilising monitoring tools like sensors can help with this process, allowing for the detection of any issues. You know, when problems arise, adjustments to settings or processes should be made. Safe staff training ensures everyone in, is equipped to identify and address issues effectively. Keeping detailed records of records, tracking the progress and learning from mistakes. Flexibility is key as adjustments may be necessary to uphold quality standards. Continuous improvement efforts, continuous improvement efforts drive ongoing fine-tuning and optimization of processes for better outcomes. Right. Identify items that do not meet quality requirements and recycle or discard in accordance with replace procedures. Identifying items that don't meet quality standards is important. When you find them, keep them separate from the good ones. Figure out why they didn't meet the standards. Like, you know, is it a manufacturing problem or just some damage? And see if they can be fixed. If not, follow your workplace rules for recycling or getting rid of them. Keep track of right, keep track or write down what happened to them so that you can help improve things the next time. Alright? If you if you get something off the off the seat sitting around there and it's got some damage on it, pull it off, alright? Something like this from the counter fix. Alright? If I that off the seat and see around, I saw that, I'll probably check the tool. Alright? The tool might be broken, it might be damaged, alright, not cutting it nice and effective. Could be worn down, alright? Replace the tool, alright? Yeah, keep keep improving things. You don't you don't want that to keep happening. Right? All right, finalize the task. Clean work area, safely dispose of waste, and identify terms for recycling in accordance with workplace procedures and environmental standards. Right, maintaining a clean work area and disposing of waste properly are essential practices for workplace safety and responsibility. Begin by tidying up the work area, ensuring that all debris, tools, and materials are organised and stored away when not in use. Right. It doesn't look like there's much debris here, but if there was, I'm sure they'd clean it up. Just look at the place, it's absolutely spotless. Right. <clears throat> Collect any waste generated during work activities and dispose of it safely, according to your workplace procedures and regulations. Right. When, I've, when I've been uh, when I was a cabinet maker, we had a big bin, we had a big skin, alright? Any, any waste that would come off, if it was skinny, it'd be snapped up or cut up, and we put in the bin, alright? And 
This includes, includes separated recyclable materials from general waste and following designated recycling procedures if applicable. By prioritising cleanliness, safe waste disposal and recycling, you contribute to a safer and more sustainable work environment. <coughs> Clean machinery, complete routine maintenance and leave in safe mode in accordance with workplace procedures. Cleaning machinery and performing routine maintenance are crucial for keeping equipment in good working condition. Start by thoroughly cleaning the machinery, removing any dirt, debris or residue. Then follow the Then follow your workplace procedures to complete routine maintenance tasks, such as lubricating moving parts, inspecting for wear and tear, and replacing worn out or damaged components. <clears throat> Once maintenance is complete, ensure the machinery is left in a safe mode according to workplace procedures. This may involve powering down the equipment, securing the safety guards and covers, and locking or tagging out machinery to prevent unauthorized use. By following these procedures, you help ensure the safety of both yourself and others working with the equipment. Right. Identify, tag and report faulty equipment in accordance with workplace procedures. Right. Regularly inspect equipment for any signs of damage, malfunction or wear that could affect its safety or performance. If you identify faulty equipment, tag immediately to indicate that it is not safe for use. Use standard tags or labels provided by the workplace to clearly identify the issue. It might look something like this, alright? They might not all look like this, right? Many places they have different tags, but it might look something like this. Report the faulty equipment to the appropriate person or department according to workplace procedures. Provide detailed information about the issue including the location of the equipment, the nature of the problem, and any potential hazards it may cause. Keep records of all tags and, report, and reported faulty equipment, including the date of identification, the nature of the issue, and any actions taken to address it. Follow up with reported issues to ensure that they are addressed in a timely manner. Monitor the status of the faulty equipment, and verify that repairs or replacements have been complete, completed before returning it to use. Right. That one's especially important. If, if something hasn't been fixed and you go to use it, right, very dangerous. Right. If, there's, if there's a chip in the, sun, in the part of your machine, it breaks, it flies out, it can stab you, it gets you in the eye, it could, could be worse, it could go up in the head, right. many, many things can happen. It's tagged, don't use it, make sure it's, make sure it's good to go. All right, <clears throat> all right quiz. All right. Questions are, all, right. all true or false, should be pretty simple for you, all right. You should look out for anything that could, car, could cause harm, like slippery floors or dangerous machinery, true or false. All right, true or false, before you start working with MDA Ford, you should look for more than water damage. True or false, when checking the cutting tools and jigs, you don't need to wear appropriate safety gear. All right. Don't need to wear it. Do you? True or false. All right. True or false, you should check that the registry stop buttons are accessible and working prior to the machine starter. True or false, if adjustments are made to a machine, you should run further trial runs. <coughs> True or false, you should not Familiarise yourself with the machine's capabilities and just operate it straight away. With no knowledge, don't even worry about it. Simple. Uh, true or false? When problems arise, adjustments, adjustments to settings do not need to be made. All right? If problems arise, why would they need to be adjusted? No way. True or false? You should separate the good material from the bad material. All right? True or false? Maintaining a clean work area and disposing of waste is essential and a great safe work practice. True or false, once a machine has been maintained, you should leave the machine on with safety guards open. Alright, true or false. Alright, I've got some paper here, you should all have some pens, 
So I'll just come around with some paper and just get a right through or false. I haven't numbered them, but uh, you can number them if you want. That way it's simple for you, whatever works. All right. <clears throat> Adjustments are made to a machine, you should run for trial runs. Also true, right? You should not familiarize yourself with the machine's capabilities and just operate it straight away. Pretty simple one, all right? I made it very clear when I read it out. Very, 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 very false, all right? You need to know how to use the machine, right? You should separate the good material from the bad material. True, all right? We're in 2024, everybody cares about the environment, all right? True. Maintaining a clean work area and disposing of waste is essential and a great safe work practice. True. And last one, once the machine has been maintained, you should leave the machine on with safety guards open. False, all right? Very, very false. All right, let's see if I can figure out how to get back to not bad. Here we go. Alright. <coughs> Alright, so we're at the end of the session. You guys can or you guys have the knowledge to prepare machinery and workspace for tasks. You guys can or have the knowledge to set up machines. You guys can or have the knowledge to operate machines, and you guys can or have the knowledge to finalise the tasks. Well, at least I hope you do, otherwise, I do a good job as a teacher. So, right. thanks for coming, guys. Thanks for, uh, thanks, for, thanks for listening, really. And I uh, hope you guys learned something, hope you guys take away something, and you can, uh, can apply some of the stuff that we talked about. Thank you very much. <laughs>